Uh, but this is now the drama show, and Nicky Sved is here from Theatre Alibi. Nicky, explain what the what the what the what the event is. This is the, the main event. That's the main thing. To uh, start well, with. we're going to be doing a show, um, which is called Riverland, um, and it's going to be happening um, at the beginning of July. And it's a piece that's all about our local area um, in St Thomas. It's been inspired by the work that we've been doing over the last three years um, in, in, in what is essentially our own neighbourhood. Um, and it's a piece about uh, an older man and a young girl. Um, and they're both thinking about the, the, the floods that happen in St Thomas. Because that's one of the things that really is a, um, a defining feature of the area. Um, is that it's built on a floodplain and it's, it gives the area its character. You know, it's really, really rich, fertile land and that's partly because it, in some ways, almost belongs to the river. It's really, um, it's, it's fantastic river mud and it's got a history of wonderful nurseries and, um, and, and great farming land nearby. And it's also, um, well... As I mentioned, it obviously floods a lot um, and has done, although luckily the, um, the, the, the flood prevention scheme has, has largely protected St Thomas. Um, but, but it carries with it that history of flooding. Um, and, and that gives it um, a certain air of... Um, well, it's, 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 it's slightly the wild side of Exeter, I like to think. <laughs> It's Sometimes the it gets called the Wild West. It's the other side of the river, isn't it? It's the other side of the river. I suppose that is a term that can be used. But all of these things can sound negative and they so are not about St Thomas. There's such a, a love of the place and pride in the place and such a strong sense of community. And that's absolutely shone in all of the work that we've been doing. And Theatre Alba itself is, is based in... A church hall in Emmanuel Hall that it, that itself holds a really rich history in that in the area. So, so you know, I talk as somebody who's very closely connected to, to St Thomas. Um, so yes, this is the this is the show that we're doing, um, and and as I say, it's come out of a whole series of stories that we've been told by people who live in the area, um, and the show is part of um, a festival of stories, of St Thomas stories, that's also going to be happening. So if we were going to be telling stories of St Thomas, it absolutely didn't feel right that we were doing it on our own, you know. There are, there are so many of us hold those stories. Um, and so we've been working with St Thomas community to put together this really wonderful festival, which is happening in all sorts of places. Um, so that's the, during, last, that's the last yes. three days? So the, first, the actual show itself is running from the 1st of July through to the 10th. And then the festival is in that last weekend over the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is the 8th to the 10th. And people can see things happening in parks, over at Emmanuel Hall, uh, in the shopping precinct, in St Thomas Church, in the Methodist Church. It's just, I think everywhere you look, there will be things happening. Well, that's, that sounds really good. Can you explain how you've put the material together? Because I understand yes. it's been going on for a few years now of, of collecting material. Yes. Well, as I say, there was a there was a sense um, that 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 the area around us as a company, and we've been based in that building in Emmanuel Hall since the mid '80s, so a long time. Um, that there were there was such a rich history and such a rich geography actually around the area that we we are and so we began work talking to people in the area um, and researching the history of the area in it, it'll be three years ago now um, and that actually was with the intent of doing a show in 2020 well, we all know what happened then right. um, so uh, so we started talking to people and we collected oh I'd say about 60 or so oral histories we worked together with Plymouth University and we just listened and we listened and we listened and there were just wonderful things to hear and also important stories you know stories that might well be lost otherwise um, and stories that often don't get heard so it felt important to be hearing them uh, and and those those stories that might seem every day that actually hold much more than that 
Um, so we started listening to lots and lots of stories and we were all ready to do the show in the spring of 2020. Um, we also did uh, a really wonderful exhibition. Um, I call it an exhibition, but I wonder if actually that's the right word. But we transformed Emmanuel Hall and those, those people who know the hall will know how big it is. It's a big hall, really high. And I remember thinking, gosh, we're going to be doing this exhibition. You know, they're going to... We're never going to fill this space. And as it was, there just wasn't enough room to fit everything in, you know. It was just absolutely teeming with photographs, with, um, with recordings of people's stories, all sorts of things and objects people had brought along. And through, that, through the week that that exhibition was on, people just, almost uninvited, started bringing their own things in, you know. There were, during that week... Apart from the fact that about a thousand, that we had about a thousand visits, you know, this is this is a hall at the beginning of a little no through road, you know, but there were about a thousand visits, and there were about five hundred things brought in during that week. People just kept coming back because because it's I think it's important to people that that, that their stories are known, and uh, and we recorded a lot more stories at that point as well. So right. in a funny sort of way, it was an exhibition of sorts, and I think it's important for people. To, to you know that we're giving something if we're if we're opening our doors but it was a bit of an exchange actually um and and people were filling in labels with their thoughts and ideas about st thomas and their stories and by the end the whole the whole hall was just covered in these little dangling labels you know full of people's thoughts and we've got piles of these things now so the idea was to take some of these stories and move them into a show, and we had a show all ready to go. And of course, then the pandemic hit. And although we couldn't do those performances, it felt really important to us to to not just sit back and close our doors when the um, when the pandemic happened. And actually, it seemed to us that people were going to feel, and we know now from experience, people were going to be very, very isolated during that time, and and that perhaps there was something we could do, you know, even if it was from behind our closed doors at the beginning. So right at the beginning of the pandemic, we started producing these little sort of digital postcards that we sent out to all the people that said they were interested to hear from us. And there were hundreds of them. Um, and they went out every single week and we drew on some of the photographs and stories that had been told to us and they went out. And we were getting, this is not what you get from mail outs from a theatre company usually, but we were getting answers all the time, you know, and it became, it felt more like a sort of, an exchange of letters through that time and people were saying that and sometimes they were from people who didn't live in St Thomas anymore but had had lived elsewhere now and really missed the place it was of their childhood but people were saying that it was the highlight of their week at that point you know those things really mattered and so we were hearing more stories and and putting things out and then at the very first opportunity we had we carried on our work so we organized at first little um, sort of guided story walks, we called them, around St Thomas, just six people at a time, you know, remember then. And, uh, and so have you, have you kept a record of those? Could people re recreate those walks now? So there's a whole... There's, there's various things that people can do. There's a whole archive on our, um, on our website and just, just go in and look up, um, look up... Even if you look up um, uh, Theatre Alibi, St Thomas Stories, or even indeed Riverland, you will come to it. But um, as well as being able to hear some of those recordings, there is, in fact, we felt it was really lovely for people to be able to do a digital version of, to be able to download a version of the walk and be sure. able to do it themselves. So if you look on our website, you'll be able to see that there is um, an audio tour of St. Thomas and you can just plug yourself in any time and right. go on that walk. And actually one right. of the things that's, that's lovely about that walk, as opposed to the one that where actors were, were um, showing us around, was that... Um, is that you can use the voices that we recorded. You can use people from St Thomas, their actual um, stories. So you can hear those as you walk along and you can hear the stories of the places in which you are standing. So, yeah, have a look on our website. It's a lovely thing to, to do. Um, and we carried on and did other, other exhibitions. We did, a, we did a really beautiful photographic exhibition um, based on the photographs of a chap who lives in the area called Ben Borley, who took portraits of St Thomas people. We are St Thomas. And there's such a, a rich variety of people living in St Thomas, you know, particularly as um, 
uh, at some points, I think this is shifting now, but it was a slightly more affordable part of Exeter. Um, and it means that there is a real, there's just a real cultural breadth in the area, which is a, a joy. So how did you start moving that into a, a script or yeah, a basis of a play? It's a really good question, because actually it's quite intimidating in some ways as, a, as an artist to be faced with that much material, you know. Um, and also not just have that much material, but feel that much responsibility towards the people who've told you those stories. It really matters and mattered. Um, so what we began to do is I work really close. I worked really closely with our writer, Dan Jameson, um, and he very quickly identified this, this the, the sense of um, there was sort of defining characteristics of the of, of St Thomas, you know, and one of them is a real resilience, and the other, of course, is the it is as I said the, the 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 character of the place being affected by the flooding, um, and it d didn't take long if you talk to people of a certain age will be one of the first things they start talking about is, is their experiences of the floods. And actually, they're often, surprisingly, those stories are quite funny. It's not, it's not all, you know, I mean, it must have been so hard, the, the smell and the, and the wet, you know, all, all of just water in a home, you know, you don't want that there. And, and in fact, in 1960, there were two consecutive floods very close to each other. So the minute that the... Um, the place got cleared up it all happened again so um but but there are sto extraordinary stories of people you know out on boats the ducks catching people ma amazing stories of people on 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 um, just being carried piggyback children being carried piggyback but also people just carrying on willy-nilly you know despite it all stories of people standing at the bar with the water up to their waist with a pint in hand <laughs> um yeah yeah and those are and that's that's not only one story you know, that, um, <laughs> no, and that I'm gives sure. you a sense of the place so we felt it was important to draw on that but also in looking at place and any place, but St Thomas certainly, it feels important not to only be looking back, you know. Um, and there are all sorts of things that come of looking back, you know, things that are important, things that you that feel really important to hold on to, things that that people feel have been lost, you know, and that those things really matter. They do really matter. Um, but it's really important to think about those people who are newer to a place and also about where you take, where you go in the future. What are your hopes and fears for a place? And so we began thinking about the other side of flooding and about the um, the environmental changes that we're all experiencing and the the propensity for more flooding. Um, and so that and that's partly why Dan chose to follow two stories: the story of a child in St Thomas and the story of an older person. One of whom is sort of whose mind is sort of populated with ghosts of the past and the other who has a real sense of premonition about what might happen in the future. Yeah, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. I hope so. I hope so. It's certainly been a really... It feels, it feels really rich territory and it's, you know, you see things differently when you're in a rehearsal room as well and you're really sort of picking apart stories. So it has felt very full, that material, and and important to people. So where do the songs come from? Because I understand there's several songs in the show. Well, there's certainly music in the show. Um, and it's one of the things I love as a theatre maker. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? We've been talking about the stories and, and it's really lovely to be able to talk about them, the making of the work as well. But we almost always use live music and it's something we, we haven't been able to do quite so much more recently. So it's a real pleasure to come back to it. Um, and... Uh, Lizzie Westcott, who's just the most glorious violinist, um, is working with us. And she's also got a very, very beautiful voice. Um, and she's composing the music for us in the piece. Um, and she's working, very, she's collaborating very, very closely with a very wonderful sound designer who's incidentally based in St Thomas. So it's very lovely to be able to get his, his contribution as well. Um, so that's Sum and Dave, and he, they've been working with these extraordinary, making most extraordinary music and soundscapes. Um, so as you can imagine, with the sort of subject matter that we're looking at, you know, looking at big weather events in there, and that's that's quite a, a, 
a, a satisfying challenge theatrically and music can really help build some of that imagery you know you can imagine if you can fill a hall like Emmanuel Hall with sound then it's then it really gives a sense of of the sort of enormity of some of those quite epic moments you know um yeah you won't often see an area completely so, covered in water i can go I, I sort of warned you this line of questioning but i'm going a little oh, bit yeah, off, no, that's off okay. your you track piece. um th- being, being a radio uh signal what we'd like to do is borrow most of the show and um, be able to put it out in little bits uh between the rest of our news items so is there any way we could get samples of sound or music uh, not, from not the, the show. whole not that we, we obviously don't want no, to lick the I'm whole sure show there is. but if we could no, have I'm sure some we parts can. of it I, th- I think the only reason that we haven't got it now is that um we weren't quite in a position to be able to give it to you but there will be recorded sound Great. all we'd need to do Great. is talk and absolutely no we'd love you to be able to do that and um yeah, there's. Oh, I think there's stuff that would make your heart sing. It's lovely. Well, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah. So yes, of course, I so think just over the next few weeks, maybe we, we can. Yes, we can, just we can let's just keep find talking. Some, some snippets. Sn- sn- snippets. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it might need a little bit of context because obviously it's composed, um, bearing in mind that it'll be part of a piece of theatre. But oh, I think sure. some of those things work yes. on their own. Yes. And Lizzie has set up. Emmanuel Hall's got a rather lovely stage at one end. Um, and Liz is set up on, on the stage, surrounded by all her equipment and her violins and ukuleles and occasionally joined by other members of the cast and is just creating that music live. And one of the other things that she's doing, maybe not so closely musical, but is that we're working with, um, with making little sound effects live. So, um, so, there, so she's up there with pots of water and things to pour and... Um, it feels, right. It's just um, good fun, I think. Um, yeah, and as I say, she's on the stage, and that's partly because the action happens all over the hall. It's really lovely being able to make a piece of theatre that is actually not just on the stage, but you're really using the fact that you're in a building. You're in a building that is really important to St Thomas and did it in itself flood as well. So The we're, building flooded? Oh, yeah, gosh, yeah. Up, sort of almost up to my forehead, you know, it was, it was high. Um, and there, there's an amazing photograph of Emmanuel Road just after the floods with all of the tarmac just ripped off the um, off the road. You know, it, wow. was, it was big and damaging and, and um, Emmanuel Hall is full of cellars. They must have been absolute, they must have needed pumping out. I mean, it um, must have been absolutely full through. But it's right, right by the water. Um, and the water, it's not just even that it would have been water rising, but that at, at that place, the water would have been moving fast as well. Oh yes, it get, I, I, that's my my recollection of it. Is it? Well, I was on, I was only small. Then. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> like, well, I heard about it. Oh, okay. Um, but this is, and I know what people told me. Yes, you were effectively in a river because yes, was, exactly. It was moving, move, move, moving very quickly. Yeah, but, yeah. But the, the flood prevention has worked subsequently. It's, much. it's worked. It's it, there hasn't been any flooding since then. So. Mercifully, mercifully, and. Uh, yeah, you just have to hope that, that that continues. But it is... No flood prevention scheme is absolutely foolproof, but I, uh, it's very largely pr- protected, and that is good. That is good. But um, it, it doesn't mean that we don't all have to be working against the effects of climate change to, to sort of hold the water beneath the, the top level of that wall, you know. Oh no, surely. Yeah. So I, c- I can see how the two themes are going to work, or potentially are going to work yeah. in, in in the performance. Yeah. Know, a couple of couple of other things to to ask about. Um, I've been looking at the brooks on on this side of the river, like the north, oh, the, north the north brook, which goes all the way through Hevertree. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, There's people been walking along that, and tra- tracing the whole track of it. Oh, how interesting! I didn't know that. Um, well, I'll, t- I'll, I'll try and put you in touch with with those those people because it's a it's a, a it's a similar project but without so much theatre. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know in, interwoven productions oh, yes, of and the squillometers yes, yes, yes. people. Yeah, yeah. That, those those sorts of ideas. Great. Um, but the the latest one they they did in Ladysmith Ride. Oh yeah. They they offered to do in performance and were told no, we'd rather have a party. <laughs> <laughs> which is what they which is what they've done. See, I hope we're doing a bit of both with this with the festival and the show. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. Have your cake I, and eat it. <laughs> yes, I'm, ju- I'm just I'm just trying to explain another, no, this another sounds really wonderful. situation that's going on that's yeah, worth yeah, yeah. comparing. But I, I just I'm I'm aware of the Alfin Brook, but Alfin, oh, yes. Alfin Turn is sort of on the edge of St Thomas. Or how just do, how on the edge. Oh, it was really hard that. doing that, you know. And I I, I don't want to draw a, a hard line around St Thomas because lots of people think of themselves as associated. And there's similarly around Exwick as well. It's difficult to know exactly where you say no that it's not St Thomas anymore. So we're quite soft about it. But I also want to say that. It seems to me that as well as thinking about, you know, the future and the past, and it was really important to us that this this piece is of St Thomas, but it's not only for the people of St Thomas. This is a story that has much wider implications, much wider implications. So it's I'm, really important I'm, for I'm, us that it, I'm, it goes I'm, beyond. I'm sure, I'm sure there are people throughout Exeter of the, so, of, the same, so. well, of the same age range that you're talking about who would know about those floods because oh, that, yes. that, that had an impact very, very widespread. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, I mean, St Thomas got particularly ba- badly hit, but people, I'm sure people throughout the city will remember them. Absolutely they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in... What sort of brooks are there actually inside St Thomas? Oh, you know, you're so asking the wrong person. How can you do this to me? Well, so Dan, who's our writer, would totally know. And there are, there's, a, there's water that runs... A lot of the water's been moved underground now, which is partly why I'm going to sound a little bit vague. But there's water that runs from... Fr- along the path from St... From Heavy... Not Heavy, from the... Um, from St Thomas Pleasure Ground along through to where the co-op is on Cowick Street. So that, that there's a little back alley through there and lots of people talk about the water that ran along there. They would hop across it, it was a sort of childhood challenge to, be, <laughs> right. to get from one side to the other without landing in the water. Um, so there is a great deal of water that runs through St Thomas and I'm afraid I don't know the exact placing of it but, but Dan who wrote the piece absolutely would. Okay. Well that's something to find out about yeah, yeah, over, absolutely. over the next few weeks because I I think exactly where the and where the a, a, lot, a lot of the brooks have been put underground. Yeah, as, you know, all, all of them at some point I think disappear. Yes, yes, yes. But if there's if there is, or you worry about them being diverted as well, because that's also not good, is it? Because the water will find a way. It, it will find a way. Yeah. In, 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 with enough rainfall, they'll they'll re, they will reappear. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the the other thing to, to, that I've mentioned before, I'll me- mention again. Um, so I'll come a little bit closer. I think these mics just need, need at the moment, they just need people to be very close to them, so that's how it seems to be working. Um, M- Matthew, the storyteller who started this show, oh, drama yes. show on Phonic FM, uh, uh, with Widsiff and Dior Theatre, I know they, they, they do storytelling, or ha- they're in France at the moment, um, or I think they might be in the UK or on their way to the UK, but mostly they're in France. But the Carrot Barton pub, uh, is the location for storytelling, so I'm going to try and find out a bit more about how oh, that how that's going on and how that whether great. that would tie in with with the the festival that you're you're working on. Oh, I'd love that. Thank you. You know, that would be really good. Because that that I'm sure that would tie up. I don't. I'm. I'm that, the couple of times I've been there, they haven't been very localised to stories, but I'm sure there's connections there. So I'll, yes, but also I'll try, I'm just trying to find I've, that out. Yeah, but I mean, you know, anything that is. Of St Thomas it is, is St Thomas. You know, it doesn't all have to be stories directly about the place either. Sure. Um, and it should be said that all of the, I mean, there are so many things going on. There, there's a newspaper that's, I think, going through or has gone through every letterbox in St Thomas that has got features about all of the things that are happening over the um, over the festival and about the show itself. So people will be able to find out about it there and on our website as well. Just just re- re- recap then, because we're, we're, we're sort of coming to the end of the half hour you ha- you, that we've got for this. Um, but, and there'll be people who've just tuned in as yeah, well yeah, sure. that missed the details at the beginning. Would you just go through again what the what the yeah, what so the play is and what the, the festival is, what Riverland is, and what so. the we're Theatre Alibi. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a yes, yeah, start again. <laughs> we're Theatre Alibi. I'm Nikki, I'm the artistic director of the company, and I'm also directing this show that's going to be happening at the beginning of July. It's called Riverland, and it's going to be happening in our building in St Thomas, and it is about St Thomas. And it's based on the project that we've been doing over the last three years, talking to the people of St Thomas, our neighbours, you know, who've got 
huge and interesting and funny and exciting and moving stories to tell. And it's a piece that's based around the idea of flooding because that's that's something that is at the heart of St Thomas. Mercifully, it doesn't happen often now. Or well, the flood prevention scheme stops it happening in any serious way. Um, but it's a story that that that. Um, that tell, it's a show that tells the story of a young girl and an older man, one of whom's thinking about the future of the place and the other whom, of whom is, is sort of dogged with, with ghosts of the past. And, um, and we're going to be telling it in our usual way, which is, um, well, we love telling stories, basically, as a company. And we're, in the cast, we've got Steve Bennett, who's, um, who is absolutely St Thomas through and through and who people will probably know as the... Exeter's pantomime dame. He's <laughs> he's a marvel. It's been a real pleasure having him in the room. Well, um, and then also, I would say that the the show itself is part of a festival of St Thomas that we've been putting on. We've been working with all sorts of community groups and individuals and artists, and we've been commissioning artists as well. We've had we've been lucky enough to get funding to do that. Um, and so there are projections on St Thomas Church ceiling, and there's going to be a yarn bombing and there's going to be jazz in the streets and picnics and concerts so that'll be happening from the 8th to the 10th in that last weekend in July um, and yes just have a look on our website and you'll see there's just a there's a mass of stuff happening great and the, the so the, the, the last thing just to check is that if we make this creative commons that the as a as a, a sound clip Yes. We could maybe other other radio or pro video producers or whatever can use it. Sure. If that's okay with you. To uh, yes, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. So we'll just see what comes sure. comes out of that. Yeah. Well, Nikki, thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very been, much. It's been well. great. You could come in this early. Oh, in no. The day. <laughs> and now you can get on with your busy day. Oh, it's day. good for me. Yeah, yeah. Back <laughs> into rehearsals. Great. Thank you. OK, well, we're going to go, we're going to go back to the play-out system and the drama show will resume uh, sometime soon. Mm -hmm.